Good afternoon. We uh, have with us uh, Jill here from the uh, Liberal Democrats uh, contesting the seat of Corby in the by-election. Uh, very pleasant to have you with us, Jill. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Now, one of the things that uh, we often see in uh, by-elections is that there is voter turnout, usually considerably lower than the elections. Uh, what would you say to try and uh, mobilise any Liberal Democrat voters for this election? Well, first of all, James, I actually think you're wrong about the turnout for this election because it's getting a lot of media attention. There's already a lot of attention and it's not until, you know, November that the actual ballot will be. And I believe that the people of Corby understand that this is an important election. They understand that it's going to make a difference nationally. And I think because of the level of interest that it's going to excite, I think we will get a good turnout. or do you think it's going to still be dominated by the three major parties? What I would love to have happen is something that doesn't tend to happen in British politics, or not yet. It may do in the future. It would be absolutely superb if people would vote for the person they thought was the best, most qualified person to represent Corby, to do the things that Corby needs done to really stand there and be a champion for Corby. Now, if that were to happen, I think the voting patterns would be quite different, but I'm afraid that isn't likely to happen. People tend to, to bank with the same bank their parents did, to read the same newspaper their parents did, and to vote for the same political party their parents did. I think that's a pity. I think that on all three issues, people should make their own minds up. So what would you say are the vitally important skills and the interests needed to be a good constituency MP, especially for a constituency like Corby? Being an MP isn't a job. It's almost like a vocation. It's like being a doctor. In the same way that a doctor's never off duty, that it's something that you do and you're always ready to help people and always doing things for them. Being an MP isn't, isn't a full-time job. It's more than that. It occupies every waking moment. It's something that you have to be prepared to put your whole life and soul into. Now, it's interesting that one of the reasons that Louise Mensch stood down was because she was unable to balance family and being an MP and I can fully understand that it's a large constituency with a huge rural area and if you're going to spend any time at all across the length and breadth of the constituency you're going to have to spend all of your your weekend time your evening time doing it as well as the main part of your working day in, in Parliament now in those circumstances I think that it's a, a job of work that it is extremely difficult for people to build families actually to do. And I think that's a pity, but realistically, you've got the choice of never seeing your family or not doing the job well enough. So I see, certainly in a lot of polls over the course of this parliament, uh, the Liberal Democrats have uh, seemed to suffer a lot in terms of popularity, uh, generally attributed to uh, issues such as uh, student tuition fees. Mm -hmm. uh, where do you stand on the issue of uh, tuition fees? It's an interesting one and I'll, I'll repeat to you the conversation that I had with a voter only last week on the doorstep. Um, I had him down as a Lib Dem supporter and knocked on the door and he, he, he opened the door and he said, oh Liberal Democrats, he said tuition fees and I thought, okay, he doesn't like us because what's happened? And we had a conversation about it and he said, um, you know, I'm having to pay for my daughter to be at university because she's doing a second degree and you don't you get no help whatsoever. You can't even get a loan. I said to him, so am I. He said, you know, I never anticipated this. Um, when when you, you have children that are growing up and you're planning for their future, it's not something that we expected to happen. And I said, I'm in exactly the same position. But we talked about it and I did point out to him, who introduced tuition fees? Labour did. Who increased the cost of them? The Conservatives did. What did we do? We didn't want tuition fees, we wanted to get rid of them, but it was one of quite a few policies in our manifesto that the coalition government's been unable to implement. And I resent the fact that we're blamed for something that was not our policy, not something that we agreed with, that was forced on us. We didn't do it. We're not the guilty party. It's dreadful. It needs to be fixed, and ultimately it will be, but not when the country's as broke as it is now. Do you think that the 
education system as it is, especially the uh, tertiary education system, is sufficient to meet this country's needs in the near future. The problem that we have is that people are not being given the right sort of skills to meet the needs of employers. I talk to a lot of employers who are anxious to recruit people at the moment and they're saying to me, I can't get the people I need with the skills that I need. So there's a mismatch. There's a mismatch between um, what people are being encouraged to study and what they need to get a job. Now, not every part of education should be vocational. There are some parts of education where people are learning for its own sake. Clearly, there are academics, there are researchers, there are people that will do that, and that's fairly abstract. But if people are taking a course with the intention of getting a job, then really that course should be more geared to what an employer wants. I wish that the universities and the colleges would work more closely with employers so as to get a better match. Do you think that uh, requiring uh, this closer match between uh, what universities produce and what employers require would actually strengthen uh, the link between uh, paying for tuition uh, if it's going to impact on future earnings? They're, they're separate issues really. I mean as far as the fees are concerned, people don't have to pay up front. I am pleased that even people in part-time courses can now get loans to enable them to pay the fees that they have to pay and that was never the case before. Nobody has to pay the fees while they're at university. When they graduate, they start to pay them once they go over a certain level of income. And that's, you know, it's unfortunate and it's affected all of my children. I've got four children and they're having to pay a lot of money for their education, but that's where we are. As far as employers are concerned, that's, that's a slightly separate issue. From an employer's point of view, they just want the right people with the right skills. Um, what I was talking about was the courses. Um, take, take media, for example. Wonderful industry in the UK, a great growth industry. We export a lot of expertise in the media, and I think it's something to be proud of. But there are people at university doing media studies courses that find to their distress, once they've graduated, that it's such a crowded market, and they're being told by by employers, you haven't got the skills that we need. You would have been better to have come along and worked your way up from the age of 16 doing the job. Now that's a very unfortunate mismatch and it needs to be solved. We're also rather bad at oversupplying markets. I mean a few years ago people began to realise that being a lawyer was a very well paid profession. What have we got as a result? Thousands and thousands of, un of unemployed lawyers, people with law degrees who can't get into the follow-up courses because that isn't about what you know, it's about who you know. And so they can't see it through and get a proper job in the legal profession. Now I blame the universities for that, encouraging so many thousands of people to enrol on legal courses with no prospect of work afterwards. I think that's irresponsible. That the Labour Party set out many years ago was to put 50% of people through college or university to get a degree. I don't think that's the right figure. I don't think that 50% of people would benefit from having a degree or be the right people to study in that way. Now, when I went to university, only 5% of people got a degree and we were very sought after. Employers came to the university searching out graduates. Um, now, we're nowhere near 50% yet. Somewhere between the 5% and where we are now, there has to be the right figure. But I don't think 50% is the right figure. So, in terms of your personal view, perhaps rather more than your uh, party's view, where would, you, where would you look to make cuts to education in terms of uh, achieving a more balanced workforce between uh, degree educated and uh, secondary educated? I think that market forces are dealing with it actually quite well because I think that undergraduates are getting more inquiring about the outcome of courses. So, so my son did a computer science course where the employment rate at the end of it was 98%. Now that's a course that deserves to be there and, and will attract students and is a very effective course. There are other courses where there are very high levels of unemployment amongst their graduates and I think that anyone applying for a course would be really sensible to ask about that, to inquire about it. Now if you've got courses where the level of graduate unemployment at the end of the course is really high, 
I think that they will wither gradually. More and more people will say, actually, I'm not doing that. I want a job with after I've got a degree. I don't want to be out there or, you know, working in a fast food place for years and years because I can't get a proper job. So I think that market forces are having an impact. There's been a drop off this year of applicants for university, partly because of the increase in fees, partly because people are starting to say, actually, do I really want to be at university or would I do better doing an apprenticeship, going to an employer who's going to train me in a different way, maybe doing a, a degree part-time with the Open University, that sort of thing. There are lots of other routes and I think that bit by bit people are getting to grips with that and that will help the education system because it will make it better.